good afternoon everyone so i'll start with uh, just about uh, brief on the nation trust right so we started uh, in 1999 and uh, in a era where banks were closing opening at 9 am and closing at uh, 3 pm so we did a uh, innovation there basically we started introducing 365 day banking where we our branches are open all uh, including bank holidays and open till late pm even to date basically most of branches are open till late am 8 pm so we have uh, 93 branches and uh, today we have we have the largest uh, customer base in uh, issuing card issuing and uh, uh, we have the largest uh, merchant base in, as a acquirer, acquiring bank for American Express. And uh, uh, by the uh, Business Today magazine, we have uh, uh, ranked as uh, top 30 business establishments in Sri Lanka. And uh, we launched first digital bank in Sri Lanka, Premi, which was identified by the top 30 digital uh, financial institutions by the uh, Asian Banker magazine and uh, we launched open API banking in Sri Lanka as mentioned. So just about to uh, tell you all about the what is happening globally. So this that shows that the fintech companies are going giving a big challenge to financial organizations in Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka and globally. So 82% of financial institutions are expected to be increase their fintech partnerships in next three to five years. And uh, over 70 financial institutes globally. So basically what is happening is the uh, Gen Y customers and anyone who is uh, digitally savvy customers are today in, uh, demanding their uh, user experience and the uh, different user journeys. So most of the banks are their top three priorities would be the uh, improving customer experience. Other important stats, if you look at from 2012 to 2017, what has happened? Your human interaction has reduced by 5% and digital behaviors have grown by 19%. So it, this, this clearly shows that the digital savvy customer base is uh, improving and uh, the uh, the uh, your customers will not go into visit your branches. This would be the future. So moving on to Nations Trust Bank digital transformation strategy, just to uh, tell you all what, what, what is behind our transformation strategy for digital. So we, we have three main areas which we are working on. One is the engagement, that is customer engagement, and the employee engagement, which I'll go into detail, and the operational efficiencies, and we consciously we put these three things, the disruptions, we'll, we continue to come up with new products, new services, and we have our own innovation lab where basically we innovate our products internally. So going into detail on the digital transformation strategy of our bank. So for customers, Basically, we are working on multiple areas. So if you look at the Freemi, the our digital banking application, it's a, a total digital lifestyle solution. We are, giving, we are giving total digital experience, including the digital onboarding, uh, uh, complying with our regulator. And the, we, are, we are already giving a seamless payment experience through our, all our digital application the tracks, such as Freemi, mobile banking, and uh, internet banking. And uh, in uh, Nation Trust, we believe the customer journeys is the most uh, important thing. And we have our own UX experts in our uh, card. So we, we are re-looking at all our user journeys, what we implemented a long time back even. We are revisiting everything and we are basically redesigning everything. So earlier, what we used to do as a uh, card acquirer, we used to send our notification, even the SMS messages to all our customers, the single message. It doesn't matter whether it's relevant to you or not. So today what we do, 
by using uh, the adverse analytics, we know your customer, the behavior. So if you are a supermarket customer, if you are a, uh, the is interested in clothing, so we pick your interest and we send only those uh, relevant messages to you. We don't go and bombard with your all uh, unrelevant messages. And uh, like customers, we believe other biggest asset is the, our employees. So same as the customers, we give a lot of priorities to employees as well. So we have brought in mobility. Today our branches, the branch managers can see their performance online on, through their mobile phone. So we have enabled most of the applications through uh, Nations Trust. Uh, they have even the approval processes, everything can be accessed through mobility. And on the move, they can basically do any approval and the, for the, uh, uh, the, our staff. And we are working on single sign-on. And uh, we have introduced a lot of collaboration tools. And Sanjeeva said, uh, we don't have a sir culture, madam culture. <laughs> There's nothing like that in our organization. It's all open. Uh, from CEO to the entire staff, anyone can go and meet anyone at any time. We have very open culture. And uh, our branches and the, uh, all the departments are Wi-Fi enabled, so we don't have Facebook lock, block. All YouTube is available for any staff to access through their mobile phones, and they can bring their mobile phones or their personal devices and connect to the free Wi-Fi networks. And on the operation side, operational efficiencies, we are working on multiple fronts. So we have already implemented robotic automation, process automation in our organization. So most, most of the, uh, the usual tasks are being automated through RPAs now. And our, we have already implemented workflows end-to-end, -end, basically uh, the person coming to a counter and requesting for a service request to all the way to the back office, all the, all the processes are automated to end to end. And uh, we have already started the advanced analytics. We, we have uh, uh, started with the video analytics also. Now today we can see a customer coming to our branch and how long it's going to take to serve a customer and who has served, why it has taken a long time that sort of level we have started analyzing, analyzing using uh, advanced analytics. And uh, the most important thing is our enterprise architecture. So we have looked at the architecture because for us to support the architecture, it is important that uh, we have a solid uh, foundation laid. So which coming slide, I'll be talking about the architecture. And we are working on the software defined networks. And uh, the when you open it out to a digital transformation, the other biggest challenge is the operational risk. So more you open, your risk are more higher. So what we have done is we, have, we are separately working on the risk management front to ensure that our processes and everything is being uh, sec for secured. And uh, clustering opportunities are already opened up because of the analytics front which are working. And uh, like I said, the disruption front, Open API banking, free me. We are already introduced QR payments in the country. We are basically you can go the free me merchant. You can do a transaction by using QR. And uh, we have our, our own innovation lab, Cafe and Lab, and we were first to introduce the uh, fintech hackathon in Sri Lanka. And uh, apart from that one, we recently had our own uh, internal hackathon also, where like so the internal staff get together and came up with a lot of internal ideas. So going move, move into open banking, like Seshika said, we saw the challenges, the fintechs and the telcos and the startups basically eating up to uh, banking domain and the, the uh, larger uh, the uh, profits or the uh, margins enter the margins uh, uh, enjoyed by banks are not no more there. So the fintechs and the startups have already started coming to that space. So because of that, uh, keeping aligned with our strategy, we started, okay, so why don't we go and introduce the open banking Sri Lanka. So our open banking is, uh, we are following the same guidelines issued by the European Union, which is uh, regulated by the European Union countries. 
So we follow the same thing. And uh, generally bank, bank will go for this kind of a thing after regulator uh, mandated the, uh, as a mandate. But we didn't want to do that one, so we, we want to collaborate with the startups. And we saw the new business opportunities from the independent app developers, especially from the small and medium enterprise sectors, SMEs, and the large corporates. So instead of uh, basically are using your cash management solutions, now we have the capability of directly integrating the, even the large corporates uh, ERP systems. And uh, third, part, third parties can consume our APIs. Today we have, uh, in our sandbox environment, we have over 300 customers, 300 registrations, and 300 test cases running today. So our open banking stack has two services, account information services, which you get the basic account information, account list, account opening re request, card data retrieval, card transactions, customer information, push notifications. And under payment service provider category, we have fund transfers, card payments, transaction inquiries, bill and utility payments. So these services are already available for any third party or any uh, the SME or any large corporate to currently to consume. So this will go, list is going, uh, growing. So we are, if, for the need basis, we'll be uh, developing further services. So if you look at uh, FreeMe, FreeMe, all the uh, merchant integrations were done using uh, Open API stack. So these are the categories which we have. We have supermarkets, large clothing stores, online shopping stores, cinematic goods, car parks, digital health services, and uh, taxi applications. So uh, if you look at, uh, I can talk about one case, where Kiel Super, Kiel Super has over 80 outlets uh, in Sri Lanka, and uh, they have uh, six, over 600 uh, point of sale cashier points. So this project we took uh, less than a week for us to integrate all 80 supermarkets. Just imagine a situation where if you have to integrate uh, at the point of sale level using any other infrastructure. All key super supermarkets are connected through their central location. So we have given an API where basically they have consumed and their cash register is uh, connected directly to their, uh, our application. So when you go there to the supermarket, uh, they will ask the mobile number as a uh, loyalty uh, for their loyalty system nexus. So then at the end of your checkout, you have to say simply, you are, using, you are paying through FreeMe, and they will ask whether you are using the same mobile number. So the transaction will come to your mobile app, the FreeMe application, just a matter of clicking approve. So straight away it will go back to the cash register and the same bill will be printed. No signatures, nothing required, no additional point of sale receipts or nothing. So that's easy, basically, when you look at the API stack. So just to talk about the technology role that uh, technology played and the challenges and the solution what we had. So although we are a relatively young bank, we had our own legacies. So what we had done earlier, all the integrations were, were done uh, at different times in different levels. So when we introduced ATMs, we went and uh, did a direct API to ATMs. When we introduced uh, mobile banking, yes, we went and did another API to mobile banking from the core systems. Internet banking, yes, another API. So when we had cases where customers go into ATM, it shows a different balance. When you log into mobile banking, it shows a different balance. Because uh, in banking streams, there are multiple balances. You have ledger balances, you have account balances, you have net balance, you say, there are so, all sort of balances. So whoever who developed that one basically picked wrong balances. Today we don't have that issue. It's a single API where it, if it is incorrect, yes, one place to correct, but I mean, everybody's consumed the same API. And uh, I draw my architecture. It's like a plate of spaghetti to it. So before this implementation, 
So it's all the direct integrations are done directly to the co-banking and the other systems, there's no uh, standard. And uh, uh, if you want to do any modification, you have to go to multiple systems and do the modifications. And uh, API layer didn't have a uh, redundancy, so uh, with, uh, any one API can go wrong, the stack can go wrong, then the single point of failure for entire thing. And if you want to bring a new uh, service where business demanding and to go, uh, to go to the market faster, it is not possible. You have to build multiple APIs from the multiple systems. And uh, identity management at multiple levels and the maintenance is a nightmare. So what we did, so we, along with WSO2, we went and built the new architecture. So now, today this is the architecture what we have, so very straightforward, and uh, we have WSO2 API manager, we have uh, uh, open banking stack separately, and which is talking to uh, enterprise integrator, and all our identities are managed to WSO2 identity server, and uh, see the uh, internet banking, mobile banking, Freemi, all other services are directly talking to API manager, and the third party apps are talking to open banking stack, where everything will go in through your enterprise integrator, and the identity is managed by identity server, and uh, so we have built our API layer, and the core systems are talking directly to uh, API layer. So there's, uh, it's very easy to maintain, so you, you got, if there's any change or any, any modification, you have to go to the API manager level, and do the modifications. So, an identity management also so easy. Say, we are working on bringing the single identity to all our applications. So you don't need to have one identity for your mobile banking, one identity for your premi, one identity for your uh, internet banking. So we, we are in the process of bringing uh, collaboration every, every all uh, identity to one platform. So if you talk about the advantages, today, within a week, maximum week, we can integrate any, any new third party. So it's just a matter of somebody's consuming our API, and uh, even I didn't expect uh, the uh, other service provider to go in this path, but I'm proud to say the uh, uh, service providers and the other third party integrators which are working, they are willing to come to the standard level and they are consuming our APIs very fast. And uh, we have a common API layer, layer for all the application. We have App Store, uh, API Store, basically, which is uh, given us the high performance, easy integration and easy maintenance. Today, if you want to go and change anything, it's so just a matter of going there and uh, changing one application layer, one API, basically it will uh, reflect to all the other services. If you talk about the security, yes, it's uh, more secure than the earlier. All APIs will be, have been exposed from the API manager, and we have extensive monitoring capabilities. We can control uh, the level of uh, the uh, APIs can consume by any single party. We know what are the services which they are consumed and what sort of a traffic it's going on. We have much larger visibility, and if you want to control Anything at the API level, it's very level, very easy. Even at the merchant level, we can control the API uh, consume levels. And as, as I said, the APIs are secured via Auth2 token. And uh, also this has introduced, like I said, the central identity access management, where we, we can have single sign-on for all our applications. So there's no duplication of the uh, identity management. So identity server will uh, have the, all the identity management where the, whatever the third party application or any other application we are bringing in, they will directly consume the, uh, the identity management from the identity server. So from the customer point of view, you will, you will have uh, one identity across all the platform. So, other main area is basically 
what we can do is we can uh, do the same thing to our employee identity management also. So which uh, IS can be integrated with the Active Directory and all our internal applications can be directly integrated with the identity management server. So for the employee applications, you have internal applications also, it would be under one uh, identity. So we don't need to have multiple identities, uh, the issues of uh, basically when people resigning to go and delete uh, multiple places, multiple applications, you know, the banking, you have like say, the more than 30, 40 applications across the bank. So it's, it would be maintained and the managed at one single level. So that, that capability also will be there. And uh, reusable components for, so whatever we use for open banking can be reused for other, other applications as well. So we have, what we have done is basically we have redesigned our application layer, the uh, whatever the uh, inconsistencies we faced. And uh, with this we have enabled freedom to independent application developers to and uh, easily de deploy their services. So like I said, uh, uh, today the uh, uh, most of the applications are directly integrated. So the uh, third parties we are working with, most of the third parties are the startups and the uh, SMEs where we have seen they are easily integrating with uh, the system without any hesitation. So and other thing is uh, the most important thing is that we have brought the high availability because the, uh, there's no single point failure in our architecture right now. So, in conclusion, what I can say, WSO2 has enabled National Trust Bank to build scale and secure sophisticated integration solution to achieve our digital agility. So, that's all from me. Thank you.